Good morning. Got another new shoe to try today. Uh, recently been running in some stability shoes and I tend to pick up the previous year's model to get that sale price over paying full price for the new shoe. Uh, one thing that happens a lot when brands come out with new shoes, similar to new model years of cars, sometimes they just make some minor tweaks and sometimes it's a complete redesign. Uh, so the shoe I'm wearing today is the A6 Gel Kayano 30. And this one was a complete redesign uh, from the 29. Has a completely different midsole, outsole, everything about the shoe has changed. So it's still a stability shoe, but this time they're coming at stability kind of from a different angle, uh, where it's a 4D guidance system is what they're calling the midsole here. And the place where you typically would find a medial post in a stability shoe, this actually has some softer foam in the shoe in that spot. It also has a full outsole, or full midsole rather, of Flight Foam Blast Plus. Uh, but this is the eco version of that foam. So uh, it's a bouncy foam, a soft foam. Uh, this also has an incredibly wide base to it. So they're going for stability from the width of the base, uh, the fit of the shoe, a very firm heel counter. Uh, but this shoe has a nice plush feel when you step into it. A nice fitting upper, a little bit on the tight side, but I actually prefer that. So Asics actually just came out with the Kayano 31, which would be the kind of slight tweaks to this version. Looks like they made some upper changes, but it's still keeping that same new uh, midsole geometry. Uh, so this was the time to buy the previous year's model at a discount. Uh, so the, this shoe is $160 new. Uh, I was on sale for uh, $120, and then I got an extra like 15% off. So I got them for like $109. Uh, so that I can deal with. I did a five mile easy run in the 29s uh, yesterday. So now I wanna take these new ones out and see how these feel compared to those. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of a longer run today. I'm gonna try and do a, a long run at easy pace and see how the comfort and stability of these shoes feel over this run today. Okay, 15 minutes into my run today, just wanted to give a little update on how these are feeling to me. And I'm getting strong Hoka Clifton vibes from these. Uh, they have that similar really wide platform and soft foam. Uh, these are giving me, I had the Clifton 6. These are reminding me of those. Those were a lighter shoe than this one. This one I believe is over 13 ounces. Have to weigh it when I get home. Uh, but these have that same kind of just comfortable upper, nice wide platform, a little bit of bounce and roll. Uh, this is not your, your speed day shoe, but that everyone should know that, <laughs> you know, going into this shoe. It's a wide shoe, it's a heavy shoe, it's a comfy shoe. It's built for those uh, long runs, those cruisy miles where you just want to be comfortable and supported and uh, taken care of uh, over long distances. And I can see that this shoe being great for that. It really does have a nice softness to it, but it's not incredibly soft. A little bit of bounce and roll. I really haven't tried to turn up the pace with these. Maybe I will towards the end of this run today just to see how it feels. Uh, but I'm not, that's not what I bought the shoe for. I'm, I'm using this for uh, my marathon training block. I'm probably gonna be taking these out for a lot of long runs where I just wanna be comfortable and supported. So, uh, so far it's doing really well. So the A6 Gel Kayano 30. This may be the most daily trainery, uh, daily trainer type shoe that I've ever used. I've done four runs in this shoe now and have 22 miles on it. So I got a pretty good understanding of how this one feels. And I have to say, A6 really does make some quality shoes. Like quality control wise, everything that they make is just fit and finish, really nice, uh, really solid, just appears to be durable, well-made, 
comfortable. Uh, I got a bunch of ASIC shoes behind me now and they're all doing a great job for me. So first thing I want to talk about though is how this differs from the Kyano 29 which was the shoe that it just replaced. Uh, this is more of a traditional stability shoe where it has the firmer foam in the heel, the softer foam in the front. Uh, so it doesn't have quite the same squishy experience as the 30 does because it has that firmer foam in the heel for stability. Whereas this shoe, it's really all about the midsole geometry. Uh, so ASICS is calling this their 4D guidance system. They have some of the midsole kind of carved out on the side here to encourage the shoe to collapse this way instead of inward. Also the way the heel bevel is uh, encourages you to turn away from the side you'd be pronating. And something that I think is pretty interesting, usually this would be a medial post in a stability shoe where it's stiff and hard. It's probably actually about half the soft, uh, twice as soft as the rest of the foam. So this is the Flight Foam Blast Plus foam. This is a different type of foam that's actually really soft. And the idea here is that instead of it being stiff and firm to prevent you from overprotonating, this kind of when you lands on it bounces you back off of that area. So they're using really the geometry of the midsole to create that stability without having to have a really firm piece on this side here. And this one also is just a massively wide shoe. Uh, so we're achieving stability from the shaping of the midsole, uh, the width of the shoe itself, and the fact that this Flight Flown Blast Turbo is a bouncy foam, it's a soft foam, but it's not incredibly soft. They also use the Eco version of this foam in this shoe, so it's a little bit different than the Fight Foam Blast that's in the Nova Blast. Having that softer foam in here really gives this much more of a compliant ride than the 29. The 29 feels more like a firm shoe. I also feel I can run a little bit faster in the 29 because it is a little bit more firm. This is more of that uh, max cushion uh, shoe, but it's a max cushion shoe that's also stable, where a lot of times those max cushion shoes, when you get this much stack, can be a little bit too squishy. So I think this one does a nice job of balancing comfort and also stability in a max cushion type shoe. This has a 40 millimeters of stack in the heel, 30 in the forefoot for a 10 millimeter drop. The previous shoe uh, was 25 in the heel and 15 in the forefoot. So it still had a 10 millimeter drop but a much uh, lower midsole stack than what you're getting from this shoe. So this is a much more plush experience than the 29. The other thing that's really interesting about that is uh, they weigh pretty much exactly the same. Uh, that one, even though it has the lower stack, uh, is 13.21 ounces in my size, the US 12, 12 and a half. Uh, this shoe came in at 13.25, so basically exactly the same. So that's pretty impressive that they were able to add uh, 15 millimeters of stack to the heel and actually have this be a lighter shoe, especially with all the cushioning and uh, plush materials this has. That has a really thick, soft tongue uh, that is that is fully gusseted. Uh, the heel counter has lots of padding around it, and this is one of those really stiff heel counters that's not going to move on you at all. So you get a great lockdown in the shoe. I also like the width of the upper here. It is comes in a little bit at the toe box, but this actually fits my foot really well with that nice plush tongue. And my toe comes up to like right about here in the 12 and a half. So right before uh, where the toe bumper comes in the shoe, which is pretty much exactly where I want it to be. So the 12 and a half is what fits me well in most of the ASIC shoes. Uh, I did end up getting a 12 in the Super Blast, which runs a little bit longer. Uh, it is also interesting though, picking this up, feeling the difference in weight with the Super Blast. Uh, that's a big advantage to this shoe, but they're meant for completely different this purposes. This shoe's coming in at 9.9 .9 ounces in a 12, uh, which really is a significant difference. Uh, but this shoe's more meant to be uh, a training shoe that you can also run fast in. I'm considering when the Super Blast 2 comes out, using that as a marathon shoe later this year, because this also has a very wide footprint here. If you look at these two, it's very similar. So the Super Blast, even though it has this really high stack, it's also a very stable shoe as well. If you look at the shape of these two, it's actually very similar. The, the shape of the midsole, uh, the shape of the upper, is uh, very similar between these two shoes. They have a very different feel on foot. This one's much more springy, much more bouncy, better for running fast in, where this one's more on the cushy, comfortable side. But if you like the fit of the Super Blast, uh, the, I think the Kayano's gonna fit you really well also. And looking at the other side of the spectrum, this is the Asics Metaspeed Edge Paris. And just look at the difference between these two shoes when I put them next to each other. You wouldn't even think that they fit the same person. Uh, this one has that super wide midsole uh, or super wide uh, profile to it where this one's much more narrow, stripped down for racing, significantly lighter. And just look at the size of this shoe compared to that one. The whole thing fits inside of it. So uh, this is the these are two completely different shoes, but both 
great at what they do. This is a super light, fast racing shoe, bouncy, explosive, and this kind of goes the exact opposite route. So I would say these are two really great quality shoes, but completely different. This one is for those daily miles, uh, keeping you comfortable and stable for long runs in marathon training. And then when you take this one out, you're ready to go on race day. I really do like that a lot of these brands are looking at new ways to do stability instead of just putting a post in there and making it a heavy, stiff shoe. Uh, this one is also flexible as well. It has some torsional rigidity to it. It's not completely loose, but it gives you a nice little bit of bounce and roll, not incredibly explosive like a, like a Nova Blast would feel, but this definitely keeps you rolling along on those long runs. So buy it weight or second rate with this one. Uh, this one is definitely a quality shoe. At new, it's 160 dollars and I think it is worth that price uh, but now you can get it on sale for 120 most places I was able to get it for a little bit less as well since the 31 just came out and again it looks like the 31 just had some upper changes and they changed the outsole pattern on it a little bit uh, so I would say the thing to do between those two is to go for the 30 at this point but between the 30 and the 29 this is a significant leap forward from this shoe this is a much better shoe than the 29 to me I'll post an update on this shoe as I continue to run in it I expect to get over a hundred miles in the pretty quickly because I have a training block coming up a lot of races this summer and then my uh, marathon the Chicago Marathon in October so I'm really gonna start kind of ramping up my miles I think this shoe and the Super Blast are gonna get a lot of those miles because those are two uh, comfortable stable shoes uh, that one allows me to run a little bit faster in it and this is just the uh, the Honda Accord of running shoes uh, reliable it's gonna last a long time you're gonna be comfortable but it's a uh, not going to break any land speed records. That's all I have for today. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.